All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our session on the topic of how cryptocurrencies are changing the world of asset management. My name is Duncan Hoffman. I'm the general manager in EMEA at Chainalysis. I've been working at Chainalysis for about two years. And prior to this, I've moved all around Europe dealing with uh, compliance, transaction monitoring systems, AML, CFT at, at banks all over the world, frankly. And today I'm joined by Philip Bradwell, chief economist at Chainalysis. Hi there. I'm Philip Gradwell. Uh, over the last decade, I've been an economist working on a number of issues from the economics of climate change. And then over the last few years, thinking about the economics of cryptocurrency and how we can analyze the data to understand this new asset class. Great. So before we get into today's content, I wanted to introduce Chainalysis to those of you who don't know us. We are the blockchain analysis company. We provide data, software, services, and research to government agencies, exchanges, financial institutions, and insurance and cybersecurity companies in over 50 countries. Our data platform powers investigation, compliance, and risk management tools that have been used to solve some of the world's most high profile cyber criminal cases and grow consumer access to cryptocurrency safely. Chainalysis builds trust in blockchains to promote more financial freedom with less risk. So with that, I'd like to just jump straight into it. Philip, I think the main question people have is whether Bitcoin is an investable asset yet. So I would say yes. Bitcoin has existed for over 10 years. And in that time, it's really proved that it's here to stay. The key thing that draws people into it is the fact that there's a limited supply. There'll only ever be 21 million Bitcoin created. And because of that scarcity, People are really interested to hold it, given that other assets are becoming less and less scarce as we get a lot of inflation and so on. And that means there's been around 100 million people, it's estimated, that now own Bitcoin. It's not just the scarcity of the asset, the regulation and compliance around it has really matured and the price volatility has reduced. In fact, in 2020, it's been below that of many traditional assets. And the returns have frequently been very good. So people have made a good amount of money on Bitcoin, although it's not risk-free. But the key thing is that risk is now on the performance of the asset rather than whether this asset is going to be around in the future. Gotcha. So, I mean, what other cryptocurrencies might be interesting for asset managers then? So there are many other cryptocurrencies. In particular, there are two that are much more popular after Bitcoin. The next largest is Ethereum. And that's followed by Tether, which is a cryptocurrency version of the US dollar. And then there are thousands of other smaller cryptocurrencies. But even with these two, there's much less of a consensus around their value as there is with Bitcoin. These other cryptocurrencies, they have much greater uncertainty about whether they're ever going to turn into something useful. That does mean that you could potentially get much larger gains from investing in them, but you really have to be willing to take that risk. So if this is your first foray into Bitcoin, I would really focus there before you move in to other cryptocurrencies. But it's important to say that cryptocurrencies are just the first of the digital assets. So recently on the 5th of October, Jay Clayton, who's the chairman of the SEC, said that he thinks that one day all stocks could become tokenized. So I think it's important to understand how cryptocurrencies are working today so you're ready for that future when many, many more assets are digitized. And are you seeing demand from asset management clients for this? So the customers of asset management firms are actually quite keen on cryptocurrencies, even if some of the asset managers themselves aren't. Fidelity Digital Assets had a recent survey of 774 investors where they found that high net worth individuals are the investor group already holding the most cryptocurrency after dedicated cryptocurrency funds. And the macro environment that we're currently in is really driving a huge amount of interest into Bitcoin. You know, there's that scarce number of 21 million that are ever going to be created in a time of unprecedented monetary policy and quantitative easing. And we're seeing a large number of companies now starting to hold funds in Bitcoin. Recently, there was MicroStrategy who bought $425 million of Bitcoin for their treasury. And then Square also bought another $50 million uh, of Bitcoin. And you know, we can see in the data that more of this is happening those two examples are just the most public face of that shift to hold assets uh, in Bitcoin. 
isn't there this common perception though that there's just too much compliance risk to even handle cryptocurrencies? How would how would you respond to that? So I would say that Bitcoin is more compliant than ever before. You know, compliance has really now become mainstream. It's what Chainalysis offers, and we provide compliance software to over 180 cryptocurrency exchanges. And the Financial Action Task Force, which is you know, the global regulator on compliance and anti-money laundering, is developed you know, a regulatory framework. And law enforcement agencies around the world are regularly prosecuting cases involving cryptocurrency. And as a result of that, Bitcoin's reputation as you know, a criminal's currency is very outdated. So we can look at the data and we see that around 1% of the transaction volume was related to illicit activity in 2019. And the fact that we can actually provide such a statistic is due to the transparency of the transactions that are recorded on the blockchain. We can see all of the transactions and we can label which ones are related to that illicit activity. We've got this complete picture that you don't get elsewhere. I think that really demonstrates the confidence that investors can have in you know, the legitimate origins of their holdings. It really is possible to buy Bitcoin that you know came from an okay source. So what are the, some of the use cases though that kind of give Bitcoin its value here? So as I've mentioned, there's that fundamental scarcity. There's been 18 and a half million Bitcoin created to date, only 21 million will ever be created. But also interestingly, up to 3.7 million Bitcoin might already be lost. So there's actually gonna be far fewer Bitcoin available than that total number. Those were lost in the early days of Bitcoin when it was more a technology experiment than a valuable asset. So people didn't take care of you know, looking after them. So there's that scarcity value, but it's not just about buying Bitcoin and holding it. There's actually billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin moved a week. So it is actually you know, a transaction network, a way of moving funds around. And those funds, they move globally with 42% moving across regional borders, say between Eastern Asia and North America. And so it actually has this big role in moving billions of dollars of capital around the world. It can also be used as a means of payment. That's relatively rare. People tend not to buy that much with Bitcoin, but that's quite different from the other safe haven assets that are out there. They don't have as much convertibility. It's difficult to go and shave a bit off your gold bar and use that you know, to buy a coffee. You can actually do that with Bitcoin. And as the technology advances, that will become easier and easier. Okay, well, I mean, you've convinced me here. Let's say I wanna offer cryptocurrencies to my clients. What do I need to do? So the steps for asset managers to offer cryptocurrency investments are actually relatively simple. First of all, it's just crucial to be informed about the market because you're going to need to provide sound investment advice you know, to your clients. If they then say, okay, I actually want to you know, buy this cryptocurrency, you've got to work out how to execute those trades. Third, you've actually got to hold those cryptocurrencies securely on behalf of your customers. This is known as custody. You don't want to be among those 3.7 million Bitcoin that have been lost. Now, Chainalysis does provide insight into the market uh, via our free market intel website at markets.chainalysis.com and a free weekly newsletter uh, that I write every Thursday. It's called the Market Intel Report. If you're looking for trade execution, that can be offered via institutional accounts on exchanges or brokers. You know, there's a really professional industry that's developed over the last few years to serve those needs. Although it's important for you to vet them because you need to understand the compliance processes you know, of these counterparties that you might be getting to execute your trade to make sure they're sourcing that Bitcoin from the place that you want. Cool. Yeah. So once the cryptocurrency has been acquired, it needs to be securely stored. Wealth management firms and asset managers, they can either custody their cryptocurrencies themselves, or in fact, you can outsource that custody now. Again, there's a big industry that's grown around it to serve your needs. Well, thank you so much, Philip. I mean, this has been enormously helpful. And folks, that kind of concludes today's presentation. I mean, thank you all for joining us. If you have any questions around today's content, please feel free to reach out to us directly via sales at chainalysis.com. But we also invite you to check out markets.chainalysis.com, uh, the site Philip referenced in, in his discussion here. And subscribe to the Market Intel Report, delivers a weekly summary of the most important cryptocurrency trends right to your inbox. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you.